if the degree of the numerator is less than the denominator, the horizontal asymptote is at y equals 0. Okay? No matter what. No matter what the coefficients are, I don't care. If the degree of the numerator is less than the denominator, then the asymptote is at y equals 0. There was y equals, let's see, we want the numerator less than the denominator. So something like x squared plus 2 divided by 3x cubed minus x plus 1. Okay. The degree on the, oh, I think I said cubed and wrote squared. This should be 3x cubed minus x plus 1. All right, the degree on top is 2. How do I know the degree on top is 2? I'm looking at the highest power of x in the numerator. It is 2, so the degree on top is 2. The degree on the bottom, I look at the highest power of x on the bottom. It's 3, so it's a degree 3. So I've got a degree 2 on top. I've got a degree of 3 on the bottom. So that means I go to, I don't, stop, stop, I don't even care about anything else. Check the degree. If numerator is less than the denominator, asymptote at y equals 0. That's the x-axis, right? Horizontal line through the x-axis. That's where my horizontal asymptote is, if in that first situation. If the degree of the numerator is equal to the denominator, then the horizontal asymptote, the horizontal asymptote is the ratio of the leading coefficients. So the ratio of the leading coefficients. We had situations where we looked at it and we noticed, we kind of saw the pattern that when the ratio was 1 over 2, that was our horizontal asymptote. Um, so, but it could happen with things that are not linear functions. So, for example, if I had y equals 2x squared minus 1 divided by 5x squared plus x minus 2 or something like that. Oh. Watch out, minus 2, or just 5x squared plus x, that'd be fine too. Um, the degree on top and the bottom is the same, right? Degree of 2 on top, degree of 2 on the bottom. So then I check the ratio of the leading coefficients. It's 2 divided by 5. So I know that my horizontal asymptote is at y equals 2 fifths, all right? Well, point 0.4, so that's where my horizontal asymptote would be. The numerator is greater than the denominator, then there is no horizontal asymptote at all. So I don't have to worry about it. So if this, if kind of situation three happens here, there is no horizontal asymptote. Situation X. No horizontal asymptote. Um, just as a, an example, uh, I'm out of space. Uh, I'm going to have to go up here. Just as an example, if we had Y equals... You know, x cubed minus, oh, that's a squared, x cubed minus 3 divided by x plus 4 or something like that. The degree on top is greater than the degree on the bottom, right? The degree on top is 3, the degree on the bottom is 1, there would be no horizontal asymptote. So uh, your notes are going to look a lot nicer than this, but this situation, there's an example of the situation. One of the problems when we just graph it is sometimes the lines connect, the asymptotes connect, because the TI-83, 4, whatever, doesn't have very many pixels, and so the asymptotes look like part of the graph. It can be kind of confusing. So we're going to have to actually kind of use our brain. Sometimes zooming in helps, sometimes not. Yeah. Okay. Then I said the first thing that I do is look for horizontal asymptotes. We just learned that to do that, I look at the degree of the numerator. What is the degree of the numerator in this example? So the degree on top is 0. The degree on the bottom is 2. So I know that I've got situation 1, that first situation. So my horizontal asymptote is at y equals 0. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw that in the graph. Cannot break this line. When am I dividing by 0? Well, that's going to happen whenever x squared minus 1 equals 0. Right, so I add 1 to both sides, I get x squared equals 1. And if I square root both sides, don't I have to take plus or minus since I'm taking the square root of a variable? All right, so I get x equals plus or minus 1. Oh, there's two. Plus or minus 1, so there's two vertical asymptotes. One of them 
is at 1. And another one is at negative 1. You need to have parentheses around your denominator when you plug it in your calculator. And you get this thing in blue, this graph in blue here. So then the question is, how do I find the domain and range of this function? Well, I always deal with domain first because I think it's a little bit easier, maybe not a lot easier, but a little bit easier to deal with the domain first. When I deal with the domain, I start from the left, from, we say, x equals negative infinity, and I come in from the left and I keep going. And it looks like I've got function values as I come in from the left. I know what it is. Until I hit One. the asymptote, I have to pick up my pencil, pick up my ink pen or whatever. And then I can keep going because i got function values down here. That's great. I don't want those dots on there. but um, And then I'm going to keep going. Uh, oh, until I hit the asymptote, i got to pick up my pencil, and then I can keep going until forever, right? Yeah. So every value in the domain works, except... One and negative one. One and negative one, because I'm dividing by zero. That's impossible. All right, so my domain then... We'll just leave the writing big. That'll be good. My domain is all real numbers except x cannot equal plus or minus 1. <laughs> Looking at y values now for the range, I start at the bottom and I go up. And I'm going up until I hit, uh-oh. At that point, the vertex or the maximum, I have to pick up my pen. Because if I look, all, there's no y values in here. Right? What? There's no y values in that blue shaded region. I, if I look at you know y equals negative 2 here, and I'm like, all right, y equals negative 2. Where is there a graph at y equals negative 2? Uh, go wherever you want. There isn't one. right? OK, so that's not in the domain. So I go up into that maximum. What is that maximum right there? Uh, Start at negative infinity until I hit a point where I have to pick up my pencil. That happened at negative 6. So from negative infinity to negative 6, uh, whoa. I'm golden. And zero. I keep going up with no function value until I get to above zero. zero, right? Just barely above zero, I can start putting those values in my range. So at zero, I'm like golden. From zero on up to infinity because I can keep going. And uh, if we kind of, if we'll do the, the big pen here, I can keep going up forever. And it's got this kind of, this volcano thing going on or whatever. Um, and so everything from zero on up is in the domain, or excuse me, in the range. Well, the degree on top is two, right? X squared, the degree on top is two. The degree on bottom is also two. So where do I look for the horizontal asymptote? There are none. Nope, they're equal, right? So they're equal. Oh, I know. That means that I'm looking at the ratio of the leading coefficients, so my horizontal asymptote must be at two over one. At y equals 2 divided by 1, which is just 2. All right, so the first thing that I do is I draw that in. Horizontal asymptote at 2. Graph is not going to break that point at 2. So they will occur whenever I divide by 0. All right, well, the question then is, when is x squared minus 9 equal to 0? Well, that happens whenever x squared equals 9, which is when x equals plus or minus 3, very similar to the last problem. So at plus or minus 3, I've got a couple more asymptotes. So I've got uh, from here at 3, whoa, from 3. And then at negative 3, I've got an asymptote. Okay. All right, so Emily's graph looks like this. It starts off, and then it goes through. It looks like 0, 0, and then it comes back down. That's the middle portion. And then um, above these asymptotes up here, it does one of these things. All right, so that's a pretty cool graph. Um, and now the question is, the real question that we've been driving at this whole time is, what is the domain and range of the function? So let's start with domain like we did before. Here we go with the giant yellow. Let's use the highlighter this time, in fact. All right. Oh, I know what it is. Domain. I come in from the left, and I keep going. I'm checking for function values. Yeah, I'm good. I got this graph going on up here. Everything's wonderful. Oh, I hit the asymptote. Pick up my pencil. That is not in the domain. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Everything is great. Oh, another asymptote. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Everything else is beautiful. It's lovely. So my domain then, somebody said earlier, John said, my domain D is all real numbers except X cannot be plus or minus 3.
plus or minus three. So starting at zero, there's no graph. I have to pick up my pen, and then I can keep going until I can put it back down here, right? So at two, I can keep going on up forever, right? And so my range, sorry, my range, I'm not going to have enough room to write it there. Where can I write this? Oh, Bottom left quadrant. So my range then is from negative infinity up to zero, including zero. Zero is part of it. And then I go from, what was that, two? This value yeah, right here, two? two? So two, do I include two or not? Yeah, you include two. I don't but think so. I don't think you do, sir. Up through infinity. Positive. Austin said the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree, the degree of the denominator, which tells me immediately that there's no horizontal asymptote. So, so no horizontal asymptote. Okay. Vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote. That's going to occur whenever the denominator is zero. The denominator is zero whenever x minus 2 is zero. When does that happen? That happens when x equals 2. So I've got a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. That's it. Remember, don't just put 2. 2 means nothing. x equals 2 is actually a line, a vertical asymptote. Okay? So that's my vertical asymptote. I don't know what else happens on this graph. So I'm going to have to go to my calculator. I'm going to have to graph it. Somebody graph that, please.